Welcome. If you're watching these videos, you probably have heard about Cisco Threat Response and how it reduces the complexity of your incident investigation and response tasks by tying together some of your multiple Cisco and third-party security infrastructure investments. So we're not going to talk much about that today. My name is Ben Greenbaum. I'm with Cisco's Advanced Threat Solutions team, and we're going to talk about not what Threat Response does, but about how you can get it. Cisco Threat Response is free for users of Cisco's Advanced Malware Protection for Endpoints cloud product, Cisco's ThreatGrid Malware Analysis Cloud Platform, our Umbrella Secure DNS solution, Cisco Email Security when managed by our Security Management Appliance, and Cisco Firepower Network Security Devices. In addition, we are adding new integrations on a regular basis, and by the time you watch this video, the list of products that include Threat Response may be longer than what's shown here. But if you are a customer of any of these products, you can log into Threat Response today, and I'm going to show you how. Threat Response is, in the simplest description, an API aggregator. We talk to all these APIs so you don't have to, and we do that via modules. Each module handles one API, some from external third-party intelligence providers, some from internal monitoring systems in your network or in cloud services that you use, and some for response capabilities offered by control technologies. And of course, some provide both or even all three. In this series of brief tutorials, we will cover how to log into Cisco Threat Response in this video, and in future videos, how to configure those modules and what capabilities each module brings you. The configuration of the modules will be covered in those follow-up videos. In this one, we're only going to show you how to get to Threat Response and what modules are pre-configured for you. You can get directly to Threat Response by going to any of these URLs. Pick the one that makes the most sense for your location and go there in your browser of choice. There are other ways to access the product as well, of course. There are pivot points built into the consoles of both AMP for Endpoints and ThreatGrid, and more coming as Threat Response capability gets built into the entire Cisco security portfolio. In addition to that, there are browser plugins for Chrome and Firefox that allow you to leverage threat response capabilities against malicious observables listed in any browser content. This ability to seamlessly jump into and out of threat response is one of the strengths of this integrated architecture. When you go directly to the threat response console, you are prompted with this login screen showing you your options. Log in with your Cisco security account, which is either your AMP for Endpoints credentials or was perhaps provisioned for you when you purchased a qualifying product. If you don't have one, that's okay. You can click the link to create one. If you've not previously used a ThreatGrid account to access Threat Response, do not choose that option now. It's there for legacy purposes only. For the purposes of this tutorial, let's say we don't have an account. So we'll create one. Creating a Cisco security account is simple. Just fill in the fields, click Create Account at the bottom, and click the link in the resulting email, which brings you here. Read the terms and confirm your acceptance. You can now log into Threat Response. But to use the system, you will have to prove that you own one of the qualifying products. You can select a cloud service or connect an on-premise device. If you have both, it doesn't matter which you do first. If you have AMP or ThreatGrid, simply ask your administrator to invite your new Cisco security account into the organization. Otherwise, configure the module that you have chosen to do first. Directions on how to configure specific products will be covered in other videos in this series. Find the one for the first product you're going to configure and then come back here. After you're in, whether you logged in with your AMP for Endpoints or ThreatGrid account, or whether you created a new account and then went through that configuration process, this is what using Threat Response will look like. In this screenshot, you see an investigation in the Threat Response console. In that investigation, you can see that six modules provided the data that is included in the result. If you click on Modules at the top, you can see and edit your list of modules. These first four modules listed are on by default and require no additional credentials or configuration. Even these alone have value, but if you have the credentials to access Threat Response in the first place, then you are entitled to at least the module that pertains to the product or products that got you in. For now, we will go over what each of these four default modules provide. AMP Global Intel is Cisco's threat intelligence database shared across all Threat Response users. This contains both open source and proprietary Cisco intelligence. 
Private App Global Intel is a storage facility for your own organization's intelligence that will be available over the API and via future integrations. The contents of this repository will not be available to users from other organizations unless it is also present in public or their private locations. AMP File Reputation is a database of billions of file hashes and the associated disposition history on those files. This database is populated via file analysis from ThreatGrid, researched by Cisco's Talos Threat Intelligence team, and other methods. Talos Intelligence is Talos' own repository of threat intelligence. Talos Research underpins all of the Cisco security offerings and is made available directly to threat response users via this module. All the other modules require credentials and configuration, and we will cover each separately in the other videos in this series. These four alone are very powerful already, and there's no other place to search them all at once than here in Cisco Threat Response. However, the more modules you add, the deeper your research can be. Continue watching to find out more about the modules that provide local context and response and enforcement capabilities. Until then, Thanks for your interest, and by all means, if you haven't already, start exploring threat response today.